I will take this small window of opportunity to discuss and review the films, performances, actresses and topics of diversity in the Best Supporting Actress Oscar category for 2023. I will also mention who I think should win the award, so please note that my thoughts and opinions are my own. If you think otherwise, please comment with your thoughts and who you think should win the Best Supporting Actress this year. My previous video delves into the Best Leading Actress Oscar category, so check that out too. As the Marvel movies continue to multiply without rhyme or reason, so does the Black Panther universe. Black Panther Wakanda Forever is the sequel to 2018's monumentally successful Black Panther. Just as the first film, Wakanda Forever was written and directed by Ryan Coogler. Wakanda Forever delves briefly into the relationship between Shuri, Letitia Wright, who takes over as the film's lead after the passing of Chala, played by the late Chadwick Boseman, and her queen leader boss mother, Ramonda, played by Angela Bassett. The movie refocuses on Wakanda's battles with the outside human world and Talokan, a mysterious underwater indigenous Mexican society led by Namor. With the help of a leading female force of Okoye, Danai Gurira, Nakia, Lupita Nyong'o, and Riri, Dominique Thorne, Shuri manages to fight outside evils to protect her land and people. It's a female-driven film. Ramonda spends more time grieving the death of Chala, and sooner than we expect, she gets killed off Namor. She drowns. I wish Angela had more scenes in this film and did not get killed off. The character has so much more to add to the story. She was the most interesting. But Angela Bassett did bring to this role the energy of a female leader, loving mother, and somebody so committed to making their culture and community flourish that they will put their life on the line. After all, she saves Riri, a teenage engineering genius, from drowning, but she herself doesn't survive. With her marvelous outfits, commanding presence and warrior spirit, Angela Bassett steals the scenes. The movie overall has a few moments in terms of plot and character that feel incoherent, but at least they have established that Shuri is the next Black Panther. Angela Bassett has accumulated a long list of memorable performances on film since the late 80s. Her notable work worth watching is 1991's Boys in the Hood, 1992's Malcolm X, 1993's What's Love Got to Do With It, and 1995's Waiting to Exhale. She was nominated for the Best Actress Oscar in 1993 for What's Love Got to Do With It, which is based on the life of Tina Turner, who I have made a video about too. Check it out. Bassett is a Yale University graduate with a BA in African American Studies and a Master of Fine Arts. She always had a chic and intelligent persona that she has represented on screen too. She stays away from stereotypes of black women on screen and sexually exposing scenes. She turned down the lead role due to the sexual nude content of Monstrous Ball, which earned Halle Berry an Oscar. Bassett said, that's the image that I like to put out there, and those are the parts I'm attracted to, but not the iron fist kind of strong, just self-assured. I'm nice too. Also, she said, this is a career about images. It's celluloid. They last forever. I'm a black woman from America. My people were slaves in America, and even though we're free on paper and in law, I'm not going to allow you to enslave me on film and celluloid for all to see and to cross the water to countries where people will never meet people who look like me. So it becomes bigger than me just becoming a movie star and being on TV. So if you're going to show every black woman as 400 pounds or every black woman as the prostitute on the street, but I've always maintained that I cannot do because of the way I'm made up or because of the way I think. I don't begrudge that there is someone else who has no issues with that. I really like the timeless beauty of Angela Bassett. She looks incredible for her age and her Wakanda look adds another layer of regality. 
Her outfits are so eye-catching. The whole costume design is incredible. So I hope this film will win Best Costume Design at the Oscars this year. It also has been nominated for Best Original Song, Best Makeup and Hairstyling, and Best Visual Effects. Altogether, this film has been nominated for five Oscars. The Whale is a psychological drama directed by Darren Aronofsky and starring Brendan Fraser as the lead of Charlie, a morbidly obese man making amends with his estranged daughter before he dies from heart failure. Hong Chao stars as his nurse and only confidant, Liz. From severe binge eating episodes to meltdowns and eye-opening confrontations, Liz is always there by Charlie's side. Charlie grieves the death of his partner, Alan, tries to pay off debt and reconnect with his daughter, whom he had not seen for eight years. Not only was Alan Charlie's partner, but also Liz's brother. This film is considered Fraser's pièce de résistance, his major comeback into the spotlight and as a serious actor, as opposed to the humoristic one that we grew up watching in The Mummy franchise, George of the Jungle and Furry Vengeance, for example. Fraser has been garnering a lot of awards and praise for his performance. This quiet, bleak and touching film allowed Hong Chao to prove her dramatic acting and further her career as a dynamic actress who can do a variety of genres. Her previous work can be seen in 2017's Downsizing and 2022's The Menu. It has been a slow rise to Hollywood success for Chow, which is not surprising due to her Vietnamese immigrant low income background. It is harder to secure roles in the film as a non-white person coming from a non-affluent background. Chow's TV bibliography is far richer than in film. Her career in film is now taking off, but in order for that to continue, more roles written especially for Asian actresses must be made. But the role of Liz was not written for a specific race, actually, so the pool of casting was huge, and Hong was the best. Growing up in New Orleans with a low-income immigrant family from Vietnam, it was a big step for Chow to pursue creative writing and to act as a hobby at Boston University. Chow stayed determined and relentless to act and proudly an underdog, she managed to mix genres and play around with her versatility. We can see so in The Whale, so vulnerable, grieving and intense opposite Fraser. The Whale, despite its controversies surrounding the depiction of obesity and also hiring of a non-obese man, Chow still gives a solid performance in The Whale as a supporting actress and a solid chance to win the Best Supporting Actress Oscar. But in terms of winning, the more prominent names like Angela Bassett and Jamie Lee Curtis might overshadow her. The film has two other Oscar nominations. Set in 1923, at the end of the Irish Civil War, on a remote fictional island in a Sharon off of mainland Ireland, we follow the tension between ex-friends, Pardick, Colin Farrell, and Colm, Brendan Gleeson. Colm avoids Pardick and cuts his friendship with him to try to live his life more meaningfully, spiritually, rather than wasting his time chatting about nothing with Pardick. The heartbroken Pardick does whatever it takes to understand Colm's sudden decision and tries to get them to reunite. This push and pull friendship is set in a rural, simple life setting where all villages know one another. There is only one pub, large distances between homes, and a lone grim granny wafting the hills of Inisharan in a black cloak like a real banshee. I love her character. Pardick lives with his sister Siobhan, played by Kerry Condon. A matter-of-fact, sincere and down-to-earth lady who not only tries to help fix the broken friendship of the two grown yet lonely men, but also is having an existential crisis of her own to find a better, meaningful and fulfilling life outside of Inisharan. The story is about Siobhan learning the meaning of life, a purpose, just as much of Pardick and Colm. 
Barry Keoghan stars in a supporting role of a simple-minded but good soul Dominic, who has a crush on Siobhan, who adds more drama and depth to the film. The film is a beautiful study of the meaning of life, family, friendships and loneliness, the comedic relief in the dialogue of all the characters, particularly Pardik and Siobhan, adds an enticing edge to the film, making it more enjoyable to watch and not so heavy. Carrie shines on the screen. Her range of emotions is vivid. We sympathize with her a lot. I love that no matter what happens between the two male leads and their friendship, we know that Siobhan has found a new, more fruitful life. There is nothing for her in Inisharan. The lack of jobs, personal growth and social life holds her back from living life to the fullest. Martin McDonough wrote and directed this film. His past collaboration with Gleason and Farrell called In Bruges was fantastic too. This film was a breath of fresh air among the other Oscar nominees. It's set outside of the US with many scenes of nature, expansive land, and no chaotic cinematography and shots. Not a blockbuster action film, but with proper brilliant writing and acting. Hence, it's $45 million box office with a $20 million uh, budget. The film has been nominated for another seven categories at the Oscars. Carrie Condon and Martin McDonough go way back when Martin cast her in his 2001 play, the Lieutenant of Inishmore at 18. They collaborated further as Condon progressed in her theatre experience, eventually making her a successful theatre actress. The Banshees of Inisharan is her breakout role, as her past film work has not made her quite as well known as this film. However, she did extensive voiceover work for multiple Avengers movies and has appeared in McDonough's most famous film yet, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. We should see Condon in more quality work and leading roles because she has the talent and range to play central female antagonists. A case of Nepo Baby done right. Jamie Lee Curtis, the daughter of Hollywood stars Tony Curtis and Janet Lee, followed in her parents' footsteps to pursue acting. She has been acting for over 45 years and continues to be a relevant, in-demand and loved actress. Curtis debuted in 1978 in the widely popular and zeitgeist film Halloween. As the face of the Scream Queen trope, Curtis returned to the franchise over the years in seven more movies and starred in other horror flicks that defined the 80s horror genre slasher films. Throughout the decades, she has starred in other successful films. Her more well-known comedic roles are in 2003's Freaky Friday, 2010's You Again, and 2019's Knives Out. In Everything Everywhere All at Once, Jamie Lee stars as Deirdre Bodeirdre, an IRS inspector assigned to investigate the Wang's spending habits. With a lousy haircut, pot belly, and obsession to take down the Wangs, mainly Evelyn, played by Michelle Yeoh, the character of Deirdre is a fun, dynamic, and great foil to Evelyn Wang as they enter multiverses, one in which the two have a romantic relationship with sausages for fingers. It's a love-hate relationship. To know more about the details of the film and my view on it, you can watch my previous video on the Best Leading Actress Oscar, since Michelle Yeoh is a nominee and frontrunner to win Best Leading Actress in many people's opinions. Everything Everywhere is an adventure, action-packed movie that immerses Jamie Lee in the absurd and silly. She is a genius at comedy. I like her very much. Jamie Lee Curtis is an acting veteran known by many, whereas Stephanie Hsu is an up-and-coming actress of Chinese origin who co-stars with Curtis and Yo in Everything Everywhere All at Once. This film has received so many awards and continues to do so. At the Oscars, it is dominated for a whopping 11 awards, three of which are acting categories. 
Stephanie Xu plays Joy Wang, the daughter of Evelyn and Waymond Wang, and Jobu Tupaki, the alpha version of Joy in the multiverse. Stephanie, 32, skillfully captures the angsty, lacking in support and sympathy Joy, who has tension with her mother due to their differences of opinion regarding Joy's lifestyle. The traditional Chinese expectations from her parents and grandfather put a lot of pressure on Joy, for she is more open-minded and free-spirited. On the other spectrum of existence, Stephanie plays Jobu, the film's antagonist, on a mission to destroy all of the universes that exist and herself, for she finds no purpose in living. Stephanie Hsu is a remarkable actress. She is funny, animated and sparkling on screen. The movie is something I did not enjoy, however. It's overrated, but I appreciate the acting of all the actors and actresses, especially the main cast. Their multi-talent in playing multiple genres and characters is commendable and should be rewarded. Stephanie holds her own on screen among the more experienced and famous stars like Michelle Yeoh and Jamie Lee Curtis. You can also see Stephanie star in 2021's Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. It has been a good moment for non-white actresses to be nominated in the supporting category, with three out of the five being non-white, two Asian and one black. In the past, only 12 actresses of non-white heritage have received the Best Supporting Actress Oscar in these past 10 years. Uh, five non-white actresses have won it, so the numbers and regularity of wins are picking up. So far, one Hispanic, one Afro-Latina, two Asian and eight black actresses have won. Much better than Best Leading Actress, where out of 95 years of Oscar awards, only one woman of color has won, Halle Berry. It would be a thrill to see a non-white actress win, considering the probability. Angela Bassett should win the Best Actress Oscar, in my opinion. She has proven her incredible talent during her long-lasting career, which is not easy to maintain, but she also has given a rich and radiant performance in Wakanda Forever. In addition, she has broken Marvel slash awards ceilings by becoming the first actor to win a major individual acting award for a Marvel movie for the Golden Globes and the first person in a Marvel Studios movie to be nominated for an Academy Award in any acting category. The other awards have scattered among the nominees. It is hard to tell who was the most popular. Bassett won the Golden Globe and Critics' Choice Awards, Curtis the SAG Award and Carrie Condon the BAFTA for their respective films. These ladies overshadow Chow and Shu. Jamie Lee is a much loved and respected actress with a lifetime of film history. She and Bassett are the same age, 64, and are considered Hollywood royalty. Chow, Shu, and Condon are much younger and fresher to the Hollywood scene, so they will have more time and opportunity to prove their talent. Can you imagine Angela Bassett winning the Best Supporting Actress and Michelle Yeoh winning Best Actress Oscar? That would be amazing, an iconic combination. I look forward to the Oscar Awards this year. Who wins? There may be underdogs, unexpected moments, heartfelt speeches, or funny ones too. I can't wait to see the red carpet dresses, the interviews, and the glamour. Comment on this video who you think should win and why.